Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, from Hollywood, California, Kraft presents Harold Terry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, remember the saying, an army marches on its stomach? Well, nowadays, battles are won not by armies alone, but by entire populations. For total defense, we all must have plenty of the right kind of food. That means wholesome, nourishing food. Food that produces the energy we use up in hard work and play. That's why parquet margarine, the quality margarine made by Kraft, should be an important item on your shopping list. Because parquet margarine is an economical source of important food elements we all need. Parquet margarine not only has delicious flavor that makes it a favorite for table use, baking, and pan frying, parquet margarine is a highly nutritious food one of the best energy foods you can serve. What's more, every pound of parquet contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So why not give your family the benefits of this wholesome, nourishing food and start serving them parquet margarine now. They'll like its flavor. You'll know it's good for them. So tomorrow, ask your dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now, let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Well, my goodness, Bertie, the ashtrays are all empty for once. What is this, some special occasion? For me it is, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'd like to have the evening off. Oh, is this your night to leave early? No, sir, but I'd sort of like to get an advance on next week's night off. Oh, yeah. Uh, any reason why not, Marjorie? Oh, not at all. Go ahead, Bertie. Thanks. I wouldn't ask, only we've got spectacular things tonight down at our lodge. Oh. That's the mysterious and bewildering orders of the daughters of Cleopatra. Yeah, yeah our Bertie's the head sphinx. <laughs> not no more, Leroy. I'm now the exhausted ruler of the pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> been promoted. Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, does that make you the uh, head man? No, sir. I'm practically a stowaway on the royal barge of the ancient Nile. Yeah. And ahead of me comes the major domus of the outer chamber of the inner sanctum. Yeah. Then the, 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 the chief searcher in the bulrushes for the daughters of Pharaoh. Oh, yeah. And above her comes the royal rejecter of delinquent daughters. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, isn't there a queen, Bertie? Uh, Mr. Gillsleeve, in our organization, every gal's a queen. Oh, my pardon. Uh... <laughs> well, what are you holding tonight, Bertie? An initiation? No, ma'am. It's the red, white, and blue fish fry in order of, uh, you know, to honor a group of our visiting soldier boys. Oh, yeah. The daughters of clear patriots are all 100% Americans. Well, that's a fine thing, Bertie, entertaining your uh, soldier friends. Yes, sir. We've even hired a military jitterbug band. Mm. The brown skin bully woman. Look at Bugle Boys. You... <laughs> well, <laughs> go right ahead. And if you want to take anything from the pantry for the fish fry, help yourself, Bertie. Yes. Yeah, you may want to broil a couple of cans of sardines. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Gill. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. Say, Unc, you know something? Leroy, I wish you wouldn't keep using that expression. Of course I know something. But what is it? <laughs> Well, I was reading in the paper where there's going to be about a thousand soldiers in Summerfield over Thanksgiving. Yes? Well, let me see. Yeah, here it is. Well, uh, city will play host to 32nd Regiment Thursday. USO urges all citizens to invite army men to dinner. That's what I mean. Can we have a soldier for our Thanksgiving dinner, Uncle Morris? <laughs> Leroy, you sound like a cannibal. Oh. Leroy. You mean, can we invite a soldier to come to dinner? Yes, and I think it's a splendid idea. Oh, then we're going to have one? Why, of course. When I think of all those boys, many of them so far away from home, it takes me back to the lonesome Thanksgiving I spent in an army hospital back in 1918. Gee, Uncle, I never knew you were wounded. Well, it's, it's something I never talk about. Oh, what happened to you, Uncle Mort? I was kicked by a mule. <laughs> 
checked, Uncle. It's... In the customary place. <laughs> Uh, that mule kicked me so high, they gave me a pilot's license. <laughs> you know, I spent three weeks in bed, flat on my stomach. In those days, I had a flat stomach. <laughs> but remember, kiddies, never mention a word of this to anybody. It's still a painful subject. Even now, I twitch when I pass a mule. <laughs> Gee, Uncle Mort, where did this happen? In France? Uh, no, Leroy, in Missouri. <laughs> I was buying mules for the army. Uh, sort of talent scout for jackasses. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I, I got 9,000 of them before one of them got me. <laughs> Say, I never knew you knew anything about mules. Oh, yes, Leroy. I had quite an asinine education. <laughs> yeah, but that was a long time ago. Let's forget it, children. Yes. Does that paper say how we go about inviting a soldier for dinner? Uh, inviting? Let me see. Uh... Oh, yes, here it is. Uh, patriotic families who wish to share their Thanksgiving dinner with members of the Army are requested to be at Bacon Square, opposite the City Hall, before noon Thursday to pick up their dinner guests. The Army men will be uh, bivouacked at the Square. What's bivouacked, Uncle? Uh, a, big a bivouac is a, a place where barking dogs are cooled off in pup tents. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got to remember that. <laughs> also, that word. <laughs> <laughs> It's very simple. Huh? Just one more for dinner first. Yeah. You can drive down in the morning and pick up one of the boys, Uncle. Gee, that's going to be keen. Yeah, we'd better ask Bertie if it's all right with her first, though. Uh, oh, Bertie. Yes, it's all right with me. You... <laughs> uh, that woman's wasting her time as a cook. She'd get a job as an airplane detector. <laughs> Say, I have a better idea. Let's have a real celebration. We'll get a couple of extra turkeys and invite eight or ten boys. Eight or ten? Won't that be too much trouble, Marjorie? Oh, no. I'll ask some of my girlfriends to come over. Uh, girlfriends? Oh, uh, by all means. <laughs> That'll be jolly uh, for the soldiers, too. <laughs> oh, gee, Uncle, the whole idea sounded great till you brought in the girls. Do we have to have girls? Why not, Leroy? Yes. What's wrong with them? Jeepers, don't you think those soldiers are doing enough for their country as it is without wasting their day off with a bunch of silly girls? And in conclusion, fellow citizens of Summerfield, let me urge you once more on the eve of Thanksgiving... To open your hearts and your homes tomorrow to the soldiers visiting our fair city. Yep. Quit popping your bubble gum, Leroy. Especially while I'm rehearsing my radio speech. Oh, I'm sorry, Unc. I'm doing it unconscious. Yes, I'm sure you are. <laughs> Young man, if you keep playing with your gum that way, someday you're going to have a blowout. And remember, you haven't got a spare face. <laughs> Finish your talk, please, Uncle Moore. Well, I don't need to rehearse it anymore, Marjorie. I know that speech backwards. You do? Let's hear it. I bet it sounds even better backwards. Yep. <laughs> Leroy, you keep that up and you're going to get some applause backwards. You know, I think it's wonderful of you, Uncle Mort, to go on the air tonight and urge everyone to entertain the soldiers. Well, people have always told me I should be on the radio. They say I sound just like that fellow who used to be with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably some of the girls now. Oh, wonderful. Hello, girls. Oh, yeah. Hello, girls. Cute, aren't they? Uncle Mort, I want you to meet Betty Wilkins and uh, Mildred Sherman. Hello, Mr. Well, 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 what are lovely you? friends you have, Margie. You should invite them here oftener. <laughs> Much oftener. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, not at all, my dear. I've always had an eye for redheads. <laughs> but Uncle Mort, last year she was a blonde. Yes. <laughs> I see. She's got a convertible top. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, huh? all of us girls think you're simply too tremendous starting these soldier parties. Uh, oh, he ain't so tremendous. It's that suit he's wearing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like him just the way he is, especially that straight military bearing. Yeah. After all, he was an army man, you know. He was? Mm -hmm. What branch of the service were you in? Uh, you flew, didn't you? Uh, for a short time. <laughs> What kind of a plane did you use? A plane? It's uh, an old Jenny. <laughs> and, and you were wounded, too, weren't you? Uh, oh, dear. Whereabouts were you wounded, Major Gilbert? <laughs> At the front. No, it was in the... Leroy. <laughs> I, I was just going to tell him it 
was in the middle of... Uh, the... Leroy. But don't you told me yourself you were wounded right smack in the middle of Missouri. Oh. <laughs> yes, that's right, in Jefferson City Mo. <laughs> but even so, you were lucky to have recovered. Yes. Everybody said I had a horseshoe in my hip pocket. <laughs> I didn't get rid of it either till they operated it. What were you doing in the Army when you weren't flying, Major? Well, I, I was sort of a recruiting officer. Yes, I brought more than 9,000 uh, recruits into the field artillery alone. Uh, I got a kick out of it, too. I imagine that must have been a lot of fun. A fun? Well, uh, only at the beginning, my dear. I got awfully tired in the end. Hey, um, Uncle, huh? isn't it time for you to go to the radio station? Why, George, you're right, Marjorie. Leroy, you want to come along? Well, I'd like to, Uncle, but I got a little surprise of my own for tomorrow. I'm going over to Piggy Banks' house. Oh, oh say, while you're there, Leroy, remind Piggy's sister Penny about coming tomorrow. If you mean that Piggy Banks has a sister named Penny Banks? Yes. Uh-huh. She was named after Aunt Penelope, who lived in Indiana. Auntie is one of uh, the... Don't tell me, Marjorie, I know. One of the banks of the Wabash. <laughs> me your bugle. Oh, I don't know, me boy. What you want with it? I need it for Thanksgiving tomorrow. Oh, you got the wrong instrument. On Thanksgiving, you play with drumsticks. Uh, now beat it. <laughs> oh, for corn's sake. Well, Pig, the reason I wanted it is because we're going to have a lot of soldiers for dinner. So what? We're having our cousin Rockwell. He's a city alderman. Oh, what's a measly old alderman? My uncle used to be a big shot in the army. A major in the Missouri Mules. <laughs> What you mean? Oh, that, that's what they called his outfit. Say, he recruited the toughest, meanest, frightenest outfit that ever come out of Missouri. What kind of outfit was it? Uh, a field artillery. You know, the cannon ears with hairy ears. <laughs> Do they really have hairy ears? Oh, brother. I still can't see that this got anything to do with borrow my bugle. Gee, you're dumb. I gotta make these soldiers feel at home so they can enjoy the turkey dinner. I'm going to blow mess call on your bugle. Oh, I get you. That's a keen idea, Meepaw. Now will you lend it to me? Sure. Well, now there's only one thing i got to do. What's that? i got to learn how to play a bugle. My, those turkeys sure look good, Bertie. You don't happen to have a spare leg, do you? No, sir, but I sure could use one with all the running around I've got to do. <laughs> uh, no, Bertie, I mean a spare turkey leg. No, sir. I ain't gonna subdivide none of them birds before the zero hour. Oof. And when I serve them, they're gonna be intact. A thing of beauty and a joy for about two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about some stuffing, then? Nobody's gonna do no stuffing no how till everybody does. Yes. And that includes stuffing yourself with stuffed olives, too. Oh, yeah. You're talking to me? <laughs> yes, sir. I've hardly got enough olives now to spell out welcome 32nd Regiment into mashed potatoes. <laughs> huh? You know, people have been coming to the door all morning asking for soldiers for dinner just because you went on the radio last night. Yeah, but I told them to go down to Bacon Square. <laughs> Jumping jeeps, what's that? Oh, it sounded like it came from the living room. Well, it can't be anything serious. Then again, maybe it can. I'll find out right away. Leroy! <laughs> what are you doing? Learning how to blow a mess call, Unc. Was that mess call? Sounded more like a moose call. <laughs> Boy, won't those soldiers be surprised when they hear me blowing the bugle? Yeah, and won't you, too. <laughs> oh, gee, give me a little time. All I need is practice. Yeah? I heard in school that Grace Moore practices six hours a day. Yeah, a lot of good it does her. I bet she still can't play the bugle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a sweet thought, Leroy, even if your music is sour. Oh, there's a doorbell. Uh, I'll get it, folks. Uh, yeah? Uh, excuse me, please. Uh, is this the gentleman who was speaking last night by the radio from Soldiers for Thanksgiving? Uh, yes, madam. Well, uh, permit me to introduce myself. Uh, Mrs. Sapiro, glad to meet you. Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Sapiro? Glad to meet you. What can I do for you? <laughs> well, I got right now in the oven a nice, young, kosher toiki, and I am wanting a soldier who is likewise. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Sapiro, but I haven't anything to do with these soldiers officially. You'll find them down at Bacon Square. Please. If the soldier boy I'm looking for is at Bacon Square, then he's not the soldier boy I'm looking for. Uh, Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> uh, you started downtown yet? You better get going. It's almost 12. Uh, all right, just as soon as I get my coat and hat. And Leroy. Uh, Leroy, come on if you're going downtown with me. Okay, Here I come. Uh, oh, stop that for a little... Young man, what are you doing swimming around in my old army uniform? Gee, Unc, that's part of the surprise. How do I look? You and the mothballs look fine. Oh, girls, come in here and see Leroy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, looks cute at that. <laughs> look, he's got Uncle's uniform on, and it's all pinned up. Isn't it cute the way the britches almost reach to the floor and back? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Major Gildersleeve, why don't you put it on? Oh, I'm sorry, girls. But I couldn't get into that uniform if it were three times as big as it is now and I was twice as small as I am. <laughs> which would still be half again as large as the suit would be if it were double the size of what it is now, which it isn't, thank goodness, because if it was, I'd have to wear it, and I can't because it doesn't fit. <laughs> Leroy, with all those girls coming over to our house this afternoon, I'm going to have to ask for about 12 soldiers instead of eight. Oh, that'll be super, Unc. Huh? Say, look at all those tents. Gee, where are all the soldiers? Oh, they must be inside. Say, you don't think they've all been invited out already, do you? Leroy, you get the most fantastic ideas. Uh, hello, uh, where is everybody? Uh, how do you knock on a pup tent? <laughs> There's nobody in here, Unc. Oh, my goodness, nobody home. Uh, Leroy, get away from that cannon before it goes off and takes you with it. Why did we wait so long? If all these pup tents are empty, I'm certainly going to be in the doghouse. Hey, Uncle Mort, here comes a soldier. Shall we invite him? Uh, yes, of course. Oh, uh, a soldier? Yeah? Uh, how would you like to come over to my house for dinner now? Oh, I don't know. Uh, you... We're going to have a... Hey, one... wait a minute. You leave this boy alone. He's coming home to dinner with me. Is that so? Don't you try to rustle my recruit. I saw him first. Oh, no, you didn't. I saw him first. You did not. I saw him at least 20 seconds before you did. Mister, I saw this boy 20 years before you did. He's my son. You... <laughs> Come on, boy. Mom's waiting. Yeah, Mom's waiting. Oh, my goodness. Leroy, if I don't bring back a bevy of boys for that gang of girls, my goose will be cooked instead of my turkeys. Hey, let's look in this big tent. Maybe somebody's here. Huh? Oh, oh, hello, mister. Hello. Uh, uh, this is the mess tent, Leroy. Hello, Sergeant. Leroy, this is the mess, Sergeant. Uh, where can I find some of your boarders, Sergeant? Uh, they've deserted me. And after I've been working my fingers to the bone over a hot stove all morning. Oh. You, you mean they've all been invited to homes already? Everybody, including my dishwasher. Oh, Leroy, we're sunk. You're sunk? What about me? Fifty gallons of the finest turkey a la king made from a special recipe created by Prudence Penny. Yes, yes. Twenty dozen dainty Parker House rolls that couldn't be topped by Parker House himself. And 32 mince pies made out of the tenderest part of the mint. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I can sympathize with you, Sergeant, but maybe you can help us. How? Well, it, it just so happens that we've gotten ourselves in something of a mess, Sergeant. Uh, we have three turkeys and almost a dozen beautiful girls at our house just waiting to entertain some soldiers. Yeah, you should see the cookies that are waiting for the rookies. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have a wonderful time at our house, Sarge. How about taking off that apron and coming with us? I'm sorry, sir, but I'm on duty. Yeah? Like the captain of a ship, everybody else can leave. But I gotta get down with me pot. <laughs> See, that's too bad. Come on, Uncle. Uh, before you go, I got just one slight request I'd like to make. Uh, would you please take a taste of my turkey a la king? Well, I don't think oh, I... Oh, come on. Huh? Just one teensy-weensy little taste. Well... Just so I didn't labor all morning in vain. Yeah. Here. You're conscientious, isn't he, Leroy? Well, uh, thank you. Uh, you have some, son? Thank you, but it has spoiled my appetite for dinner. And I've been saving this appetite for a week. How do you like it, mister? Well, I think I'll have a little more. Oh, no, 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 Uncle huh? Mort. Come on, we got to dig up some soldiers. Uh, you're right, Leroy. Are you sure you won't come with us, Sarge? No, buddy. Duty is duty. And besides, the colonel would be sure to catch me if I sneaked out. Oh, the colonel? I'll bet he's got a few soldiers up his sleeve. Where can I find him? Way over there at the other end of the square, sitting in his tent. Yes, yes, yes. Well, come on, Leroy. We'll lay our troubles in his lap. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm Colonel Atterbury. What can I do for you? Uh, Colonel, my name is Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, very unusual name. What can I do for you? Uh, 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 Colonel? Uh, Colonel? 
I, I have a lovely big home, a wonderful cook, and a dozen of the sweetest girls in Summerfield. What? No boys? You no. Know, that's the trouble. No boys. We get all prepared to entertain 10 or 12 soldiers at dinner today, and when I come down to pick them up, what do I find? No soldiers. Not a single solitary rear rank, third assistant, buck private. Well, I, I'm sorry. Sorry, he gargles. By George, this is a pretty pickle for our army to get itself caught over a barrel into. Yeah, and after I've been practicing mess calls all day, too. Yes, the poor little fellow almost blew his brains out. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Gildersleeve, Gil. So I think I know you from some place. Huh? Yes? Yes, I can't place your face, but your manners are awfully familiar. Yeah. <laughs> well, never mind. As soon as some of our men return, I'll send them out to your house. Sure. Huh? That's just the old brush off. I'm just stubborn enough to stay right here. Stubborn? Up. That's it. I've got it. Huh? Mules! <laughs> That's where I know you from. You were stuck again, Gildersleeve. The officer who bought more bad mules than the whole artillery could shake a stick at. Why, you... <laughs> Don't pay any attention to the way he jokes, Leroy. Great kidders, these army men. Well, Colonel, now that you recognize me, I hope you'll trot out some suitable recruits for us to take home. Gildersleeve, I've got just the right detachment for you. Yeah, wonderful. Who are they? Some old friends of yours. Huh? Whole corral full of mules. That just love to be your guest. Whoa. Whoa. Come on, Leroy. Whoa. Let's get out of here. Uh, uh, what am I laughing at? Donna, wish you'd invited me to go to dinner today. Uh, Leroy, you better run along home now and tell the girls I'll bring back some soldiers if I have to call out the Marines. Okay, Uncle, where are you going now? I'm going to try the USO headquarters. And if you see any soldiers on the way home, grab them, even if they're wearing Civil War uniforms. I'll do my best, Uncle Mort. See you when you get home. Yeah, all right, Leroy. Oh, uh, look who's standing on the corner. Well, hello, Judge Hooker. Hello, Gildersleeve. Uh, what's wrong? You look as though you've lost your last friend. But, of course, I know that happened years ago. <laughs> Gildersleeve, I'll thank you to keep your nose out of my business. I'll be only too glad to. Uh, what are you doing hanging around street corners? I'm... Well, it's a long story. Huh? I happened to turn on the radio at home last night, and there was a fellow urging everyone to invite a soldier to dinner. Oh, 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 he did. Ah, uh, that speaker. Uh, There's a man. Uh, the way he told every citizen to do his duty by our new army was stirring and inspirational. It's, it was, eh? Yes. Why, the first thing I did this morning was phone the best restaurant in town and order the most expensive turkey dinner out to my house. Uh, I was going to invite a soldier to share it. That's the effect that speaker had on me. Well, uh, where is your soldier? Well, that's where the trouble comes in. Huh? People at the USO headquarters tell me that there would have been plenty of them to go around if this radio speaker hadn't wrecked all their plans by urging everybody in town to come down after a soldier. Oh, my goodness. Well, that was it. Of all the numbskull notions... Not I... a word against that man, Gildersleeve. Huh? He made a wonderful impression on me. Uh... Clean cut... Vibrant personality. Uh -huh. One of nature's noblemen, I should judge. <laughs> Wish I could meet him someday. Would you really want to? Yes. Well, then shake hands. Oh, you'd like to meet him, too. Good gracious, no, I am him. <laughs> what? Yeah. You? Why, you hypocritical hippopotamus. What? No. No, that's wrong with me. I've misjudged you, Gildersleeve. Well, I... Yes, I've misjudged you too, Judge Hooker. I never thought you had a heart under that old thick hide of yours. No? No. I just thought your blood circulated because you brought it to a boil so often. <laughs> what are you doing roaming the streets on Thanksgiving afternoon, Gildy? Yeah, same thing as you are, Hooker. Looking for some military men to fight their way through a couple of 20-pound turkeys. Well, I suppose we do our hunting together, Gildy, old pal. Why not, old chum? After all, this is Thanksgiving Day, and we should treat each other like human beings for change. Splendid. That goes for me, too. At least for today. Yeah, well, come on, come on, come on. You work this side of the street, and I'll take the other side. All right. Oh, boy. Wait a moment. What is it? Look, here comes a young fellow in uniform now. And I saw him first. Yes, that's so. Hey, hey, son, come here, come uh, here. Stop that, you double-crossing little bot fly. Young man, how'd you like a delicious turkey dinner? Huh? Who, me? Yes, he wants you to come up to my house. I don't either. I'm in my house. I've got a great big turkey just for two of us. Uh, we got four turkeys at our house, and we'll give you a whole one for yourself, son. Oh, gee whiz, I couldn't eat that much. And besides, I'm supposed to report to USO headquarters. Uh, They're closed for the day, uh, Corporal. Come on out to my house. Oh, but I'm not a corporal. Of course not, Sergeant. Now, my car's right over here. 
So if you'll excuse us, Judge. No, nope. come this way with me, Lieutenant. <laughs> You wouldn't like it at his place, Captain. Oh, now, gentlemen, please. please. Let go of me. Hey, you're tearing my uniform. Let go of the Major's uniform. Yeah. Uh, let's trot along. Let's trot along. Okay. If you want to get indigestion, now my turkey is... His turkey is as old as he is and just as tough. Hey, I wish somebody would tell me what this is all about. Don't let him confuse you, son. I'll take you to a movie after dinner. A movie? Uh, we're going to have dancing at our house. You'll have 12 beautiful hostesses to dance with. Oh, who wants to dance on a full stomach? You do, don't you, son? Well, gee, I don't know. I never learned. No time like right after dinner. Come on, that's my car right over there. Of all the low-down, backbiting, double-dyed, unscrupulouses, I've had enough. Come back here, young man. Who, me? Yes, you. I'm going to start off entertaining you this afternoon by making this fat worm fold up like a road map. Uh, here, hold my coat. I'll be very glad to. No, I won't. Now, see here, Hooker, you point a pinky at me, and I'll beat the daylights out of you and then back in again. Hey, gee, aren't you two fellas a little too old for this sort of thing? If you keep out of this. Who invited you to? Say, I invited you. Come on, let's go home. No, you don't, Gildersleeve. I'm going to knock you colder than an Eskimo mother-in-law's kiss. What? You old... Oh. <laughs> What's the use of quarreling like this? If you've got your heart set on taking this young man home, Judge, I won't stand in your way. Yeah, but haven't I anything to say? No. Nope. Gildersleeve, do you mean this? Yes, Judge. Go on, get your car. Hurry up now before I change my mind. All right. You just wait right here, soldier. I'll be back in a jiffy, and then we'll have a wonderful dinner. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, Gildy. Yeah. Yeah. Gee whiz, mister, you got me all confused. Do I have to have dinner with that other gentleman? With that old goat? Of course not. Huh? Wait till he turns the corner. All right, come on, now run like anything. But, but the judge went that way. I know that. My car is this way. Hurry up, boy. Huh? Oh, at last. There they are now. Come on, girls, let's go to the front door. Come on. Bertie, get things ready. Leroy, there's your fuel. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, here we are at last. Uh, step right in, son, and meet everybody. Mm, gee, thanks. Uh, uh, girls, this is Jerry Arnold, Private Jerry Arnold of the United States Army. Oh, no, sir. Oh, you're not a private? Oh, no, sir. I'm not even in the Army. What? You're not? Why, no, sir. I'm a Boy Scout. Oh! <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But right now, whether you celebrate Thanksgiving next Thursday or the week after, there's one thing that's the same everywhere. Yes, that turkey's going to taste mighty good with all its trimmings and fixings. And we all want to remember that we Americans still have plenty to be thankful for. And another thing that's certain, if you make your Thanksgiving cakes and pastries and cookies with parquet margarine, you're going to get plenty of compliments on their downright good taste. You see, the delicious flavor that makes parquet margarine so popular for table use makes it wonderful for baking, too. Yes, as sure as parquet is a delicious spread, it's a genuine flavor shortening, too, not a bland, tasteless fat. Parquet adds flavor to pan-fried foods, too, and it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. So serve parquet margarine at the table. Use it for baking and pan-frying, too. Remember, you can use all you want because parquet margarine is economical and good for your family. Yes, parquet margarine is a wholesome, nourishing energy food and a reliable source of vitamin A. So right now, add parquet margarine to your shopping list. Remember, it's parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Sorry, our time's up. Happy Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. Good night. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>